Now let's talk about the 25th cognitive bias, the Lollapalooza bias. Now this is basically when two or more biases work in accordance with each other to create an amplified effect. When two or more biases work together, the results can get hairy. Misjudgment is amplified and accelerated. Things can get bad real quick because the more biases that are at work, the greater incentive it is for the human being who's subjected to these biases to act in a particular way. So let's go over some examples of Lollapalooza at work. Now imagine a stranger comes up to you and this stranger hesitates a bit and then asks you if you would like to rob a bank with them. Now if you're a normally functioning human being, you'll probably say no and back away from this weirdo. Now let's flip the script and add some biases to the mix to see how we can get you to rob that bank. Same scenario, except instead of a stranger, it's your best friend Roberto for the past 20 years. Roberto has been with you through your highs and your lows. He's always had your back. You're willing to ignore his flaws because of the liking, loving tendency. And you're willing to listen to his argument much more seriously and sincerely. Roberto asks you to rob the bank. He reminds you about how you haven't been making money lately, about how you've been searching for a job for the past six months, because it's 2008 and you're in a recession, baby. You're quickly burning through your savings and your stomach is making funny noises. You're getting hungry. The reward and punishment tendency is at play. The incentive is there. You want to rob that bank because you need to eat. You also look around. You see your friends from the neighborhood. They're driving Bentleys, they're driving Benzes, they're driving all kinds of exotic cars. They're living the good life. The life of crime has been paying them wonderfully. None of them are in jail. They all seem to be having a grand time while you're there starving because of the moral high ground you took. So when Roberto asks you if you'd like to rob that bank, you're going to fucking rob that bank. So what will make you rob the bank in the second case and not in the first case? The first case offered no cognitive biases, the second case offered four. We saw the liking, loving tendency in regards to your relationship with your best friend Roberto. We saw the reward and punishment tendency in regards to the incentive created through your situation, being in the recession and being hungry. We saw the jealousy and envy tendency in regards to your friends bawling, your friends driving nice cars. We saw the social proof tendency in regards to everybody in your community living the criminal lifestyle and getting away with it scotch-free. Four biases together are more powerful than one. So that is Lollapalooza right there. Let's look at the second case of Lollapalooza. Now imagine you've recently watched a documentary, Super Size Me. In this documentary, you witnessed a man eat McDonald's every day for 30 days straight. At the end of the 30 days, his health is terrible and the doctor tells him to get off this McDonald's a day regimen. After watching the documentary, you vow to not eat McDonald's again because it's clearly detrimental to your health. It's clearly poison. You tell your friends about it, how you're not going to eat McDonald's again. Two weeks later, You're shoving two Big Macs and a quarter pounder down your throat and enjoying it. Licking your fingers even. What made you do this? Well, let's look at McDonald's. McDonald's has social proof. Everybody is eating McDonald's. They have signs. Billions of people served. How can it really be that bad if billions of people have been served. Surely not all those billions of people have been killed by McDonald's, have they? Second, inconsistency avoidance tendency. You've been eating McDonald's all your life before the documentary and bad habits are hard to kick. Once a habit's installed, it is very hard to remove. So, It's far easier to just keep eating the McDonald's knowing that it is bad for you than to stop 
altogether. Thirdly, influence from mere association. The Olympics was recently on and you saw that McDonald's actually sponsored it. Surely it can't be that bad if these world-class athletes are being sponsored by McDonald's, can they? Can it really be that bad? Fuck it, let's get another quarter pounder. Three biases helped you make that decision. Three biases are much stronger than one, and that is Lollapalooza. Do it! Just do it!